This is Chinese chess. It is very similar to the chess that you may already know, except that it's played with different pieces and played on the intersection of the lines, not between them. But this isn't the game that we're talking about today. The game that we're talking about today is played with a Chinese chess set, but played on half of the Chinese chess board, and it's called Banqi, or half chess, or dark chess. And here's how it's played. It relies on the fact that the Chinese chess pieces are identical when seen from the back, so all of the pieces are placed face down on the board so you can't tell what they are. During each move, a piece may move either north, south, east, or west, no diagonals, and they they cannot move into a space that is blocked by a face down piece, they cannot move into a space that is blocked by a piece of their own color, and they can only move into a space with an opponent's piece if they can eat that piece according to the rules of capture, which are thus. Each piece is ranked, and that rank determines the pieces that it can eat. The king is the highest ranked piece and can eat any other piece on the board with the exception of the pawn, it's one weakness. The guard can eat any, another guard or any other piece on the board, so basically anything except for the king. The elephant is the next down, can eat another elephant and anything else lower. The cart can eat another cart or lower. Next is the horse, horse or lower. Then the pawn. The pawn can only eat the king. Finally, there is the cannon, and this one has an interesting set of capture rules. The cannon can be captured by any other piece on the board except for the pawn. The pawn can only capture the king. The cannon can capture any other piece on the board, but in order to do it, there must be a piece, one and only one piece, between the cannon and the piece that it's capturing, and it will hop over that piece to capture it. It doesn't matter if the piece that is between it is face down, or its opponent's piece, or its own side. There can be any amount of space between the cannon and the piece that it is jumping, and between the piece that it is jumping and the piece that it is capturing. So cannons are the one piece that can actually fly all the way across the board to make a capture, and thus add a lot of strategy to Banqi. Here's how you play. You start by taking all of the pieces, shuffling them up so you don't know which is which, and placing them face down on the board. Then, the first player turns up a piece, and that determines what color they are going to be for the entire of the game. Then the second player has to turn up a piece, but they don't know whether the piece that they are going to turn up is going to be their piece or their opponent's piece or what, so they just have to take that into account, do a little risk calculation, decide, well, if I turn up here, here's what I have to gain, here's what I have to lose. And play continues in this way, each player either turning up a piece or moving or capturing according to the rules already laid out. The game is over when one player cannot make a legal move, in other words, cannot turn up any pieces, cannot move anywhere, or cannot capture, or both players agree that a win is not possible, in which case it is a draw. Sometimes it is possible to force a draw if it is impossible for you to force a win, which is why it's important in Banshi not just to have the highest ranking pieces, but to have enough other pieces that you can force your opponent into a win. Frequently, a superior opponent is beaten simply by virtue of the fact that they cannot pin that one other piece to capture them. It's best to watch an actual game in play to understand the depth of strategy in the game, so let's watch a couple of people who are very good at playing Banshee go at it. With the rules that we use, cannons tend to dominate the early game, either looking for them or trying to prevent your opponent from looking for them on you. This is because the cannons at this point in the game are a free meal, the chance to take something without any immediate loss. Eventually the entire board is sparsely turned up and there is no safe place to turn up a cannon, and then the cost-risk-benefit analysis starts to come into play in the game as you try and decide, well, can I make this move, what am I going to lose, what am I going to gain? Then as more and more of the board opens up, more strategy of the individual pieces shows up. You have to decide whether a loss on one piece would be an acceptable or whether you'd be able to get something better if you could get it away. Sometimes the game hinges on a lucky draw, making the right choice and flipping up and finding just that right piece, swinging the benefit of the game from one player to the other. You have to look at what's been taken and what's left. You kind of have to count the deck a little bit, as it were, to try and determine, well, what are my odds that this last one is my king that hasn't been revealed, or my last guard? Sometimes it becomes pretty clear early on who's going to win the game, and sometimes it turns around and you never know who's going to win until near the end of the game. Bunchy games are about five or ten minutes long, so it's a perfect game for a break or a lunch break with your friends or co-workers. And the combination of luck and strategy means that nobody really loses. If you lose, you go, eh, it was just bad luck. But if you win, you get to go, ha ha, isn't my strategy incredible? And so it's a fun game all around and good for repeated plays. Now, the set featured in this video is not one that you can buy anywhere. I designed it specially for Western players who might feel intimidated by the Chinese characters on a traditional Chinese chess set with icons that would be less intimidating to learn. If you have a 3D printer or know anybody with a 3D printer, then you can go to Thing of verse, download this set, print it up, and play it yourself. But if you don't, in reality, the traditional Chinese chess set with the Chinese characters isn't that intimidating to play. In fact, 
in my experience, it doesn't take more than three games, and you're an expert at those characters and can play the game. I recommend you go ahead and just get a traditional set, learn the characters, and to help you do that, my friends who play Banshee with me have printed up a special Banshee board with a key on it. It makes it really easy to learn the pieces, and once you know the pieces, then you can go on to play Chinese chess with your set. Look at that, learn two games for the price of one. I hope I've convinced you to actually pick up this game, try play it with your friends, and maybe make your own local Banshee group. And if you do end up trying it out and like it, Comment below and let other people know that you're loving this game.